In this movie, I show you how you can rip up an audio loop to make it work with any progression you choose. The loop I've chosen is called House For You, Bass 01. It was recorded at 125 beats per minute in the key of D major. Since the loop's tempo is very similar to the one I had in mind for my song, and D major is only two half steps up from the key of my project, which is C major, chances are that the loop sounds very natural in my project. I like the feel of the loop and the bass line, but unfortunately, the chord changes don't match mine. The four bar loop is actually repeating a two bar phrase. This means we can get rid of bar three and four right away. The changes for the two bar phrase are C, D minor and G, as opposed to my chord changes, which span across four bars, C, D minor, F and G. This means we will have to cut and paste and transpose some of it to make it work. Let's get started. First, we need to find and import the loop onto the track. Type the letter O to open the loop browser. Click in the search field and type house for you base 01. From the search results list below the loop filter, click on the loop to select it. We could simply drag the loop onto the audio track to import it or below the lowest track in the workspace. But I like to use the cut and paste commands, command C and command V instead. With the loop selected, type command C, set the playhead to the position where you want the loop to start, now type command V. Notice that Logic automatically created a new track below the lowest track in the workspace. Let's first do a little housekeeping. Let's duplicate the region and the track just so we can get back to the original if we need to. To duplicate a track with all its regions, hold down the Option key as you drag the track header to a new location. I also like to protect the track and turn it off. If you can't see the buttons for that in the track header, type Option T to open the Configure Track Header dialog and check the buttons you need. Now you can lock and turn off the track. To keep things really organized, let's put all related tracks into a track folder. Select the tracks and type Shift Command D to open the Track Stacks dialog. Check Folder Stack and type Return. Let's name the folder and open it up. Our first edit should be to get rid of bar 3 and 4. There are many ways how we can do this. Let's start with the simplest one. Move the playhead to bar 3 by using the period and comma keys to move the playhead forward and backwards by one bar. Then select the region you want to split and type Command T. In our case, I prefer to use the marquee tool click zones. If you have marquee tool click zones checked in the dialog box, preferences, general, editing, you can click drag in the lower part of a region to make a selection, like so. Since our loop is based on a recording of a performance by a real bass player, the notes are not 100% on the grid, meaning they are not quantized. To make sure we cut the region at a transient at zero crossing, we let Logic find the optimum cut point. In our case, we are only concerned with the beginning of the marquee selection. Hold down the shift key and press the left or right arrow keys until you find the transient where you want to cut. By the way, if you were concerned with adjusting the ending of the selection, which we are not in this case, you can adjust it with the left and right arrow keys without holding down the shift key. Let's now listen to the pattern again to figure out exactly what parts we want to use to create our new baseline. Bar 1 is actually already perfect. It looks like we will have to work on bar 2 though. Because in my chord progression, the second bar is D minor all the way. Whereas in the original loop, D minor lasts only for the first half of the bar, followed by G in the second half. We need to make a cut. This time, we cut at the transient near beat 3 of bar 2. I use the marquee tool again. 
find the transient near bead 3 and cut the region at the marquee selection by clicking on it. We can use the second half of bar 2 to construct bar 4 and 5. For now, let's just move it to beat 3 in the fourth bar. This region works really well at this position, because like in the original loop, the bass figure leads beautifully back to the C major chord. The easiest way to move the region is by selecting it, by clicking on it, and then move the playhead to beat 3 in bar 4, by moving it manually or typing shift forward slash and then typing the number 4 comma 3. Now all you have to do is press the semicolon key to move the beginning of the region to the playhead position. To complete the second bar we simply loop the first half. Bar 3 has the harmony F major in my chord progression. Unfortunately F major is not part of the original loop. To create it, I will use the region snippet we moved to beat 3 in bar 4, which was in the key of G. We can use it to construct bar 3 in the first half of bar 4 with the exception of the last note, which I will transpose. Here's how we do this. Let's first copy it to the beginning of bar 4 and again to the beginning of bar 3. I use the typical Mac copy and paste command, command plus C to copy, command plus V to paste at the player position. Now let's make a cut at the beginning of the last node in the region which starts in bar 4. The region we just created holds the node we want to transpose. The region should still be selected. If not, make sure you highlight it by clicking on it. We will use the region inspector to transpose the region up by three semitones. If you can't see the region inspector, you may have to click on the little disclosure triangle to the left of the name region. Double click on the zero to the right of the word transpose and type 3. Now let's take care of the region we copied to the beginning of bar 3. Let's first transpose the entire region down by two semitones so it matches the F chord. Now let's make a cut at the beginning of the last node of that region and transpose the last node up by one semitone to make it the same pitch as the previous note. Let's select both regions and copy them to the second half of bar 3. That's it! Let's now listen to our new bass line and make sure we don't hear any pops that may have been created by bad cuts. If you should hear pops, simply put very short fades at the beginning or ending of the region that causes the pop. We can now bounce our newly created region to make it into a continuous audio file. We can then convert our newly created baseline into an Apple loop and add it to our loop browser. How cool is that?